Hey everyone, welcome to Inside the Vision. Now, why does Inside the Vision exist? Well, as you know, it's twofold. To inspire and to help you grow your God-given vision, but also to tell you all that Kenneth Copeland Ministries has done, is doing, and what our vision is for the future. And if you're a partner with this ministry, this program is to keep you updated on all that we're doing together. Now, today's program is specifically about that, your twice-sown seed. There are so many things that are happening here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and your finances are doing so much and making an impact not only here at the ministry, but all over the world. Remember, wherever you sow, you go. So I wanna take the next 30 minutes or so and dive right into where your partnership is making an impact. This ministry is so vital, going even into the least of them. And I want it very clear, is through this ministry, when you partner with this ministry, every time the Mike Barber Ministries goes into the prison, you're there with them because you give. That's right. Because of technology today, our ministry witnesses now to over 250,000 inmates per month. Everybody say any day now. Any, any day. day now. Now say it with an attitude. Any, any day, day now. now. I tell inmates all the time, when you getting out? Any day now. Any day now. Wow. When you getting out? Any, any day, day now. now. When's your miracle coming? Any, any day, day now. now. <laughs> Glory to God. Reginald Watts, 26 years. Life in Louisiana, you don't get out if you're in Louisiana, right. if you get life. That's right. For 15 solid years, I connected with him. And I said, Reg, every day, you say any day now. For 15 solid years, I prayed, we prayed together that any day now, two years ago, he walked out of prison. Please, I spoke God. to the head of the board. I'm taking him to our house. My wife is watching right now. I love you, oh. baby. <laughs> watching right now. And I told that board with my beautiful wife beside me, I said, if you'll let him out, he's going to come live with us. He's African-American. And I told that board, I said, I will not hesitate to leave my home with him there with my beautiful wife because of the Jesus that's in Come him. On, Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Thank you. Put that gavel down. I'm the first man after 26 years that came out with a big hug. Wow. We're two hours from the prison driving home. His bedroom's all ready. Got his clothes all ready, and the boy loves shoes. <laughs> And his warden all that time is now the commissioner over all the prisons in Mississippi, Burl Kane. He calls me on the phone. Yep. Yep. He says, hey, Mike, I've already heard that you picked up Watts. I said, I did. I said, you're on the speaker. He can hear you. Now, I've been believing for 15 solid years by faith. I'm going to put him on my staff to go do all these prisons that I don't have time to do. In two hours, he went from... 26 years in prison, everybody say any day now. Any day, any day now. now. To be an ass, I want you to come to me in Mississippi and I want you to be my head chaplain over all the prisons oh. in Mississippi. Wow. And we brought him wow. here to this ministry and this ministry interviewed him wow. and he cut his teeth on listening to Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. That's right. Teach the uncompromising word of God. One more time. Any day now. Glory to God. There was a young lady whose father was in prison. She hadn't spoken to him in 17 years. And she's flipping through the channels at home. And all of a sudden, she sees the Victory Network and she sees her father underneath the tent with his hands up getting raised oh. on one of our weekends in prison. And she, watching her dad get saved through television underneath our tent in the prison, she gives her life to Jesus. And then her father ends up becoming a life coach, which is like a missionary inside the prison. She surprised him and showed up to his graduation on the inside. And after 17 years, their family was completely restored. Christ but that God. does not happen without the Victory Family Network being able to take uh, this from the inside we do in prison to the world and bring in uniting families. That's why we have a saying, if we can save a soul, we can save a family. And it's stories like that that just excite us about all that God's going on. We'll tell you something pretty amazing that did just happen here recently. We just went inside 
of a, uh, a women's prison and we did over 406 water baptisms. Isn't that amazing? Oh, from yeah. six women got baptized. Wow. It's unbelievable. And this story you're actually seeing right in front of you right now is one of my absolute favorites. Oh. I was living in, we were living in the Book of Acts moment where Paul and Silas and the officers were listening and said, what must I do to get saved? This Officer Taylor right here, as you see in those videos, <laughs> Officer Taylor, he said he got saved just underneath our tent. We're sitting here ministering to the women in the prison, and this officer gets saved, and he says, hey, can I get baptized? And we're like, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. And so he's in his full gear, gets baptized, and the boldness that that takes, the excitement that it takes. And I tell you, uh, because of you and our KCM family and the Victory Network, we're truly able to go in and together help save souls and help save families. That is why we do it so, for the Queen Reach. Brandon, Reach. I just have to know, tell me, how have the partners been a part of that? Yep. Do, do you yep. do you see that the, the ones that partner with us, how, how does that affect what you're doing? Yes, it's absolutely incredible. Well, through the partnership, um, it blesses us. We are missionaries to the mission field of prison. And through partnership, you're able to go. And in fact, the video that you just saw, there was multiple KCM partners that loaded up on a charter bus. We had over 300 volunteers that came in Glory. and with us one-on-one, -on -one, cell to cell. And so through partnership, it allows us to go in and reach these men and women and bring church to them. But the, also, as the Bible says, go even into the least of them and minister one-on-one. -on -one. Wow to take volunteers through the partnership and it really completely changes the entire atmosphere of the prison. I so enjoy talking to people about their vision because it inspires me. It builds up my vision. It strengthens me. And I have somebody here and it's a double blessing for me because not only is this individual a visionary and they have quite a vision, he and his wife, it's amazing. We're going to hear about it, but also we're friends. And we've been friends for a very long time. And it's a reunion for us because he's been overseas, I've been here, and now we get to be together and talk about Todd Power's life and all that he is doing through his ministry called Empower. Todd, it is so good, I can't tell you how great it is to be able to have this time with you and talk about what the Lord's doing in your life. So good to be with you. Well, we're glad that you're here. You know, we do go back a long way mm -hmm. together, and uh, we were talking about that just a minute ago. Gosh, it's been, when do you remember me? <laughs> I remember you from the early 90s. Okay. Like 1993. Yep, and that we started the church in 93. Right, right. Here. So that's about the time yeah. that we, we really got to know each other. Mm -hmm. And throughout all of those years, um, we've been connected with each other. But what I want to do is really in, in continuity of your life and how did you get to where you're, you are now in what you're doing? Yeah, it's been an amazing journey, uh, uh, a story of God's faithfulness and goodness in our life. Yeah. And uh, before I get into that sequence of, of how our life has unfolded and gotten us to where we are, I just want to say a big thank you to you oh. and to KCM for being our partners because honestly, uh, Julie and I, my wife and I, wouldn't be able to do what we do out there without friends, partners like you that, that uh, empower us to empower others out there on the front lines. But kind of how it started, growing up, I had a, a real desire as a little boy to know about God. Yep. But nobody ever talked to me about Jesus. Nobody ever told me about God. And so at eight, nine, ten years old, I can sure. remember thinking, man, I really want to know about him. And I can remember looking up into the sky and saying, God, if you're real, uh, show me who you are. But nobody ever talked to me about Jesus. When I was 15, I met this girl in school named Julie. And I was always attracted to brown eyes. And she had the most beautiful <laughs> brown eyes. And so we became friends. Yeah. And uh, still at that stage in my life, I'm still saying, God, if you're real, I want to know about you. Mm -hmm. Finally, when I was 15, Julie talked to me about Jesus. It took me a little while. I guess it's my German heritage. I like to analyze things and, and work things out to make sure that yep, yep. that's the decision I yep. need to make. And uh, at 16, I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And, and in that moment when Jesus came into my life, uh, like he really radically changed my life, um, gave me such purpose and vision and desire for the future, mostly a desire to know him. And uh, so we began to grow together in our relationship with Jesus. And 
one of the first things that we did was we would go to the Anaheim Convention Center, to the, <laughs> yep. to the be annual Believers Convention yes, down there. Yes. And, and it was in those moments as a teenage boy that the teachings of Kenneth Copeland and Gloria Copeland and others right. that were there right. began to really get into my heart, into my life. And so while we were teenagers and, and really getting into God, when I was 17, I had an encounter with Jesus and I knew that I was called to ministry, <laughs> even though I had no idea what that meant. Right, right. And uh, so because of that, we'd heard about a Bible college in Tulsa, Oklahoma, never been there before in my life. I thought it was just going to be a bunch of cowboys and, you know, <laughs> who knows, you know, country folks, you yep, know? Yep. And uh, so huh. we finished high school. Uh, Julie and I got married right out of high school and we went to Bible college together. When I was 22, I took my first foreign mission trip. Julie mm -hmm. and I went okay. with uh, Dr. Jim Zirkel. Mm -hmm. You remember oh, Dr. Absolutely. Jim and Marion Zirkel. Yep, yep. Went to Guatemala. And while I was there, uh, just had another one of those encounters with Jesus. I can remember walking out on the mountains and looking into the distance at the volcanoes of, of Guatemala where yeah. their base was. And, and I just knew that Jesus was saying, I'm calling you to world missions. Yeah. I'm calling you to global missions. And again, I had no idea what that meant. Yeah. In 2002, we registered Empower International as a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. 2003, we officially launched it. And uh, when we launched, uh, we were so poor, <laughs> we, we, we didn't have anything. So yeah. we, ha we sold our home. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we sold and gave away everything we owned in, in our quest to obey God and to do what he called us to yep. do. So in, in 2003, we moved to Bangkok, Thailand. Mm -hmm. uh, we only knew one person in the very north of Thailand, which was hours and hours away from Bangkok, yep. but we knew that God was calling us to that nation and to that city. Uh, we didn't know a soul. 17 million people, a uh, Buddhist nation. Uh, oh, oh, oh. They, wow. They're the second lowest English speaking country in Asia. <laughs> and here we are with our little <laughs> girls moving into Bangkok, Thailand. But we had this passion, this heart, this, this love for the people of that part of the world in our hearts. And so that's what really drove us. Through the help and support of our partners and friends, Kenneth Copeland Ministries has teamed up with Irene Gleason to provide food, education, and medicine to the children of Uganda Orphanage. This year, celebrating 30 years of partnership with this marvelous foundation, my cousin Jenny Papapistolu just recently returned from visiting our friends in Uganda. Check out what your partner dollars and giving are doing for these precious, precious people. Hey KCM friends, partners, and Vision Insiders. I'm here in Kikum, Uganda at the Irene Gleason Foundation where they are doing so many wonderful things. I'm here with Pastor Alfred Komagum. He's the pastor of Christian Community Church. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> Greetings to you in Jesus' name. I'm Pastor Alfred Komagum, and I'm together with my dear sister Jenny and these uh, long-term friends who have been supporting us here. Uh, we are living testimonies, and we are continuing with the work Mama Irene began here in Northern Uganda. Yeah, and I just want to thank you for your partnership. This is what your gift is doing here in the nation of Uganda, in Northern Uganda. Countless lives are being impacted through church services, through feeding programs, through technical school. We've seen people learn how to sew and how to build and just so many wonderful things. So thank you. This is what your gift is doing across the world. Yeah, at the moment we are doing a lot um, in the technical school. We have over 6,000 young people who are learning skills. We have a community church that is feeding thousands with the word of God. We run Christian radio station called Mighty Fire. And it goes uh, covering into South Sudan, having listenership of over 1 million people. We feed over 4,500 children daily, breakfast and lunch and we give devotion in the, uh, the Word of God to all of them daily, and they are growing up holistically, strong to serve the Lord. Yes, yeah, so thank you for your gift. Your seed is doing so much. So what has been the focus now of the ministry and the different areas? Because you've, you have really expanded the vision 
of what you're called to do there. Right. Give, give us an idea of the different things that you're doing. Yeah. So our, our vision is actually summed up in our name. Okay. Uh, Empower International. Okay. And Empower yeah. uh, is our vision. And it is to yeah. empower yeah. leaders in those nations to succeed in their mission to reach their people for God. So when we went over there, we saw so many young pastors from those nations that were really struggling. Mm -hmm. They had no real network. They had no accountability. They, okay. they had no resources yeah. to do what God yeah. had put in their heart to do. And so God spoke to us and he said, I want you mm. to empower existing leaders. We allowed God to highlight and lead us to the right people so that we could begin empowering them. I'll give you an example. In the nation of Burma, one of the poorest countries in the world, mm -hmm. most Westerners, they don't even know where that is or what's happening there. It's been under such oppression for yeah. decades. Yeah. One of the things that God said to me was, I want you to empower them by providing them with debt-free land, homes and buildings for their ministries. Tremendous. So many of them were struggling. They were living in these little bamboo huts that were suspended a few feet over water and mud. And they would have uh, orphans in their home and they would have their own family in their home. I remember pulling up to one of those homes and Pastor Timothy is his name. Mm -hmm. And he was standing out in his front yard on a piece of bamboo, brushing his teeth outside. And I noticed on the, on the tree that he was standing next to, there was a plastic cup that was nailed to the tree and it had about 14 or 15 toothbrushes in it of all the orphans and his own family oh that would be come out and stand on that oh. bamboo to brush their teeth. Wow. And, and I can remember thinking, if I could only provide them a building for the orphans, if I could only yeah. provide yeah. them with a home for their family. Mm -hmm. And many of these guys are now my age and to, to know that they don't have to worry about a mortgage or rent or anything, Praise they can God. focus Praise on the ministry that God's called them to, to reach yeah. their people. Yeah. That to me is empowerment. My philosophy of empowerment in those nations also is I'm not gonna go in there, I'm not gonna change Thailand myself as a Western, English-speaking, American Christian. Yeah. But what I can do is I can find those key leaders that God has called and anointed to reach their people yep. because they they usually uh, have been part of the religion, the false religion of right. that nation. Right. They they understand the culture of their of their nation, and they also speak the language because mm -hmm. learning these languages yeah, <laughs> is sure. very difficult. Oh, the Thai yeah. language is almost impossible, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. But if I can go in and empower them to succeed in their mission to reach their people with the gospel. The army of God has just increased and been empowered, and yeah. there's nothing that can stop that. Yeah. So that was our strategy, our goal in reaching uh, into the, the the existing leaders, but then the up and coming leaders. This this is really okay. what I love to do. Okay, is is the next generation of leaders. Yes. Uh, the legacy that we can leave is by investing into those that are children, teens. Uh, young professionals, mm -hmm. uh, the the younger generation, that's really my happy place. Yeah. And so that's what we're doing so much now is empowering the next generation of leaders to get that passion that I got when I was a teenager yeah. Yeah. and then to discover God's purpose for their life, find out what God's vision is for their future and then pursue it with everything they've got. So that's what So, that's so what give me some now. examples of what you're doing with the children. That really right. has interested us. How are you doing that in per perpetuating right. uh, the, the gospel into the next generation? Mm -hmm. Give me some examples. So one of, one of the favorite things that we are doing right now is we are going into places like Pakistan okay. and uh, there are uh, minority communities, the Christian minority communities. Pakistan is an Islamic Republic. So Christians are considered the minorities there. Mm. We discovered as we began going in there to plant churches in Pakistan that there were many of the Christian families and the Christian children that were not allowed to go to school. Okay. The options uh, were not good. And so many of those children being coming from poor families, the Christian children, they were being forced to work as slaves in brick factories, they were forced to work in the fields, they're forced to work in the factories. And when Julie and I saw that, it was, we had never really had a vision specifically for children's education. 
But as we began to see that, mm -hmm. God put that in our heart to, be, to build schools for the ethnic minority children in yeah. places like Pakistan. Yeah. And so I think it's about 11 years ago now, we started our first school in Pakistan for these children. And uh, we started with about 30 kids in a, a facility yeah. that uh, most people wouldn't even put their animals in. <laughs> you know, yeah. we just yeah. took what we could find and we started. And uh, that was about 11 years ago. Today, we have multiple schools. We have uh, around mm. a thousand kids now in our schools in Pakistan. And uh, we have debt-free land, debt-free buildings. And uh, our students are performing academically at such a level that the government is now coming to us and saying, what are you doing? Because you're outperforming all the other private schools, Amazing. the Muslim Tremendous. schools, the public schools. Yes. And, and our kids are being full ride scholarship into some of the best universities. In fact, these children, they, they read the, they learn the Bible every day in school. Okay. They pray every day in school. Mm -hmm. They worship mm -hmm. God every day in school. In fact, when, when I'm there, sometimes they do these like Bible competitions. And, and I'm convinced that these children know the Bible better than some American pastors know the Bible because wow. they study wow. it. They, they have Bible classes yeah. every day. Yeah. To me, education is a vital part of empowering a young person. Yeah. Yeah. But not just any education, but, but Bible-based, mm -hmm. um, with, with Bible values, teaching them not only academics, but uh, godly life. So all of this, it's increasing too, isn't it? Oh my goodness, it's increasing, uh, almost to an overwhelming level. In, in America, we can't legally go into the public schools and openly preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? right. Even though right. we're a Christian country. Yes. In Thailand, which is a Buddhist country, Empower International has opened doors into virtually every public school My in the entire goodness. nation. Wow. Wow. And, and these are Buddhist public schools, but mm -hmm. they love empower they love what we do yeah and so what we do when we go in and we do these um, school assembly programs in thailand we always have our thai team because they our thai team they used to be buddhist <laughs> they <laughs> they they came to know jesus as yes. their lord and savior they're very strong christians oh. and so they share their testimony of how god came in and changed their lives and we have no resistance. The teachers, the principals, the superintendents, Tremendous. the students, they love to hear the stories of Christianity and the Bible and how God changed these yep. Thai Buddhist people's lives. And then we share the simple, powerful gospel. And so many of the students mm -hmm. say, that's what I want in my life. And so we're not restricted at all in these schools. Another, another thing that we do in Thailand that is a, another real bright spot for mm -hmm. us we have orphanages there. Okay. And uh, one of our orphanages is in a rural area. In that area, they only, the kids can only go to school through the ninth mm. grade. And so if they, if they don't have an option after the ninth grade, th there's really nowhere they can go uh, to fulfill the, the vision and the, the, the purpose for their lives. Yeah. And so we have this thing we call Empower Youth, uh, a Thailand Empower Youth Program. And it's a transition program for the students that grow up in our orphanage. Once they finish the ninth grade, we mm -hmm. move them to the city, uh, to a dorm that God's blessed us with uh, at our headquarters. Yeah. And then we have a program for the next three years where they're able to finish high school. And then during that three-year period, we're empowering them through discipleship. Mm -hmm. They're involved in all of our outreaches. They're involved in church. The students that are in our in that program right now, yeah. uh, they're they're performing at the top of their class. The 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 confidence, the boldness, their mm -hmm. their love for Jesus. They're the ones that when we do these outreaches, 17, 18 year olds are now preaching the gospel Praise in the schools God. in Praise Thailand. God. Well, you know, the partners of the ministry have supported you. Uh, many of them don't know it. Yeah. Um, uh, because we, we support different ministries. And, and this is one of the reasons we have this program is to inform them mm -hmm. of where their finances are going. And we are con we've continued to be partners with mm -hmm. you. Yeah, for in over this, 20 years. Over 20 years yeah. and excited about it. Yeah. And I just want you to you address the camera and just let the partners know, if you would, just your appreciation for them and yeah. what they've done for Empower and the fact that they get 
they get credit yeah. for this, yeah. for what you guys are doing. Yeah. So just talk to the king, yeah. talk to them. Yeah, I just want to say to the partners of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, uh, we are so thankful for you because as they support us out there on the mission field in the 1040 window in the most unreached parts of the world, we would not be able to do what we do without your partnership. I'm so glad that I have this opportunity to just say thank you face to face, looking you in the eye today because we appreciate and are so thankful for what you've done in supporting us to reach the world for Jesus. People's lives are being changed. Yes. It's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of eternity in the hearts of the people that God has called us to reach. And so I just want to say thank you for supporting us. Thank you for Todd, helping thank us you. You and Julie do an amazing work and we are so glad to be able to support you and thank help you. you in what you're doing. Thank you. thank you for joining me on Inside the Vision. It's a pleasure. It is such an honor to be a steward over your financial partnership. And what we do through this ministry cannot be done without our faithful partners. Maybe you're watching today and you're not a partner. And maybe you're a KCM Vision Insider, but you haven't signed up yet to be a partner with the work that we're doing here. That's absolutely okay. But I can't pass this moment up without at least pointing you in the direction of partnership. It's really easy to do, and you can do it all by going to InsideTheVision.org. There, you'll see a tab that says Partner Now. Click onto that, and it'll take you through a few easy prompts. And as you're praying and considering how to partner with us financially, be led by God. Don't worry about the amount. There's never a specific financial commitment. We only ask that you be led by the Spirit of God on how you should partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And if you're not already, sign up to be a KCM Vision Insider. And when you do, you'll receive a free vision journal and access to all of our bonus material. And as always, thank you for taking the time to be with us this week on Inside the Vision. So before we go, remember this. God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. What if your relationship with God became so profound that His voice became unmistakably clear? In this heartwarming book, Terry Copeland Pearson shares how she first encountered Jesus as a little girl. In an encounter with Him, she blends practical teaching with her personal journey of encountering Jesus in prayer. You'll be drawn into a deeper fellowship with Jesus. An encounter with Him is available exclusively at kcm.org slash encounter Him. The people of faith in 2024 will be standing on Victory's shore, launch out into the deep, and reap mercy's glory.